the President's press conference from the new State Department Auditorium in Washington, D.C., December 12, 1962. On behalf of the American people, I wish to express my gratitude to the French government for its decision to lend the Mona Lisa of Leonardo da Vinci for exhibition in the United States. This incomparable masterpiece, the work of one of the greatest figures of the greatest Western age of creativity, will come to this country as a reminder of the friendship that exists between France and the United States. It will come also as a reminder of the universal nature of art. At the National Gallery in Washington, beginning January 8th, the Mona Lisa will be exhibited with a special care so great a work of art merits. Mrs. Kennedy and I particularly want to thank President de Gaulle for his generous gesture in making possible this historic loan, and Mr. Andre Malraux, the distinguished French Minister of Cultural Affairs, for his good offices in the matter. And now to turn to the more physical side. For the past two and a half years, the American Athletic Union and other amateur athletic groups organized as federations have engaged in a dispute which now threatens proper representation for the United States in international competition. This includes the Pan American Games at San Paolo and the 1964 Olympic Games in Tokyo. A number of efforts have been made to resolve the differences between the AAU and the federations. This administration has made and is making its good offices possible in every way. Ultimately, the Attorney General was called in to attempt to further settle these differences. After this final effort last month, it appeared that these organizations had agreed to put aside their differences long enough to permit the United States and its athletes to compete in international competition, and particularly in the Olympics in 1964. Now, however, even that coalition has been tangled by a whole group of conflicting interpretations. The governing bodies of these groups apparently put their own interests before the interests of our athletes, our traditions of sport, and our country. The time has come for these groups to put the national interest first. Their continued bickering is grossly unfair. There is no winner, but there are many losers. Thousands of American amateur athletes, the American athletic community, and the traditions of American sportsmanship. On behalf of the country and on behalf of sport, I call on these organizations to submit their differences to an arbitration panel immediately. If we do not, we will not have an Olympic team in 1964. It is my earnest hope that these groups will quickly abandon their concern with victory for themselves at the conference table and focus on their more proper concern, victory for sportsmanship. In uh, his speech today, uh, Khrushchev said, among other things, that he was holding the United States to its pledge against invading Cuba or was ready to take uh, measures of his own. What is your reaction to the speech, and uh, what is the situation now regarding a no-invasion pledge? Would we ever make one such a formal declaration without first obtaining on-site inspections? Well, the, uh, the, uh, I haven't had the chance to analyze the speech with the care with the, which such a speech uh, obviously uh, should be studied. Number two, uh, Governor Stevenson and Mr. McCloy are now uh, up in New York and have been for some weeks discussing uh, this matter of uh, our future position towards Cuba and the Soviet Union's position towards Cuba, the question of weapons, uh, inspection, aerial observance, invasion. At present, I would say that uh, our situation was best described in the statement that I made at our last press conference. I'm hopeful that uh, the negotiations uh, that are now going on in New York will come to some uh, conclusion in the not too distant future. But pending that, I would say that uh, we are going to stay with what I said uh, two weeks ago. In the meanwhile, we will maintain, uh, to take every step that's necessary to uh, make sure that these uh, missiles are not reintroduced into Cuba or that offensive weapons are not reintroduced, and we are taking those means daily. Mr. President, in connection with Governor Stevenson in Cuba and some of the recent reports on the position taken by the governor in uh, the National Security Council, against this background, can you tell us, sir, whether prior to your announced decision on October 22nd that Governor Stevenson took at any time a position that was contrary or counter to the final decision as you announced it? Well, as I said uh, before, I would not uh, attempt to uh, describe, uh, verify, or in any way uh, discuss a position that any member of the National Security Council has taken. 
National Security Council is an advisory body uh, to the President. In the final analysis, the President of the United States must make the decision, and uh, it is his decision. It's not the decision of the National Security Council or any collective decision. Uh, that was my view and my statement on Cuba a year ago, and it's my view on uh, Cuba and the policies we followed recently uh, uh, this year. I don't really think that uh, there's much uh, advantage to uh, various press speculations on various positions which the members of the National Security Council took on the days from Tuesday till the next Sunday. Quite frankly, uh, those positions frequently changed as uh, members of the Council uh, examined the alternatives and the possible repercussions of various courses of action. And uh, it is my uh, view that uh, when the final consensus was reached, and uh, when uh, I finally made a judgment, and that judgment was not really completed in its ultimate sense until uh, the Sunday morning that uh, every member of the Executive Committee of the National Security Council uh, supported the policy we finally adopted. I would say, after having read the various uh, statements of the past uh, 10 days, that any historian, and I think this matter should be left to historian, who walks through this uh, minefield of charges and countercharges should uh, proceed with some care. Right. Yes. Uh, do you agree with Ambassador Stevenson that the authors of this article acted irresponsibly? I've never attempted to characterize uh, uh, members of the press. I think that they have to meet their responsibility. I've had uh, some uh, criticisms with the various points which have been made, and I wouldn't attempt to characterize uh, writers of this article or any other. Do you plan any inquiry to learn uh, uh, who it was that uh, breached the security, the National Security Council? Yes, well, I've satisfied myself, and these matters are never, as you know, never can be, or very seldom are ever really determined with the precision. I've, it's my judgment that uh, this uh, statement or an interpretation of Governor Stevenson's position uh, did not come from a member of the National Security Council. I've satisfied yeah. myself on that. I never heard anyone characterize Governor Stevenson's position in that way, and I've satisfied myself that no one did. Now, there are other people that might have, but that's a matter for the uh, reporters, and it's a matter that, uh, as I say, I think can be much better left to history when the whole record will be spread out in great detail. Well, then who, uh, who leaked it? Is no, right? I don't uh, know who, and I think it's unfortunate if anybody uh, discusses any matter that comes before the National Security Council because I think it lessens its effectiveness. But I've satisfied myself that the remark did not come from a member of the National Security Council. Mr. President, uh, sir, if it becomes necessary to cancel the Skybolt missile program because of missile operational uh, inability, uh, will it, what role can Britain play in our mutual atomic uh, defenses? Well, I think it uh, will play a uh, significant role as a nuclear power. The problem with Skybolt is that it's the most sophisticated weapon imaginable. To fire a missile from a plane moving at high speed uh, to hit a target a thousand miles away requires uh, the most advanced uh, engineering and, the re and of course uh, uh, it has been uh, really in a sense uh, the kind of engineering that's been beyond us. We put a half a billion dollars into it already. To complete the system uh, might cost another and to buy the missiles that we would want which might require two and a half billion dollars. The five tests have not been successful so that there really is the question of uh, how much it is worth to the Brit British and ourselves to uh, put in that kind of money when we have competing claims for our available funds. On the other hand, the British uh, have a uh, very important equity in the matter. It was to discuss that equity that Mr. McNamara went to Great Britain. I'm sure that it will be a matter which will be discussed uh, with the Prime Minister in uh, Nassau and the United States, which is reviewing its budget, will take uh, no final decision on until these uh, conferences have been completed. Mr. Yeah. President, has the opposition expressed by Chairman Wilbur Mills of the Ways and Means Committee changed the administration's position on uh, tax cuts that it has proposed for next year? Well, I think that uh, Mr. Mills' uh, interview should be read in, uh, in entirety. And, uh, it, it does, if you read the entire article, uh, it does not suggest that the administration under some circumstances and Mr. Mills may be so far apart. And uh, in fact, I'm going to see Congressman Mills today. I'll be addressing, talking about the matter somewhat further on Friday night. The New York Economic Club will make detailed proposals. We intend to go ahead with our program. And then, of course, it will be up to the Ways and Means Committee and the Congress to make a judgment as whether they will accept it. 
What I think should be of concern to us all is not uh, the question of the immediate business prospects for the next three or four months, and, uh, but really uh, the general trend of our industrial growth, our unemployment uh, lag over the last five or six years. And really we should consider not only our own economic uh, situation, but that of Western Europe. I think that uh, Mr. Jacobson of the International Monetary Fund, I think made a speech in 59 or 60, saying that the great period of the inflationary thrust might be coming to an end, and that what you concern the Western capital countries was uh, really deflation. And I'm hopeful that uh, as we have a chance to explore this matter with the Congress, that they will give it very uh, close attention. Quite obviously, Mr. Mills will have a very decisive voice in the final decision, but we hope to adjust our viewpoint so that we can get some action on this program next year. Yes, Ms. Gray? President, your speaking of historians induces me to ask you this. Most former presidents have put their official papers in libraries in their home states where they are not readily available to scholars and historians who come here to work with the Library of Congress and other agencies here. Have you decided where to put yours and would you consider putting it in Washington? Yes, I'm going to put it in Cambridge, Massachusetts. <laughs> Let me uh, say, I know that uh, we have a library now in Independence, Hyde Park, Mr. Hoover's library at Stanford, uh, Mr. Uh, Eisenhower's library at uh, Abilene. Uh, there are uh, advantages and disadvantages. In some ways, it helps stimulate uh, scholarship in those areas. In addition, uh, through uh, scientific means of reproduction, microfilms and all the rest, it's possible to make documents available generally here in Washington and uh, through the archives, Library of Congress, and at the libraries. The number of scholars who deal with these subjects in detail, it seems to me, will find it possible in a central place to get the kind of documents that they need. So that uh, uh, while there is a problem, as you suggest, Ms. Craig, I think that uh, we can, and this will certainly be increased as time goes on, we will find it possible to so uh, reproduce the key documents that they will be commonly available, I would hope, in Washington. There are a great many other advantages to a library. If you've gone to Franklin Roosevelt's library and to Harry Truman's library, it offers a good deal of uh, stimulus to the study of American history besides being a place where you can keep uh, uh, for a long time documents. There are many other things of interest which I think are rather advantageous to have spread around the country, particularly as it stimulates the study of the uh, presidency. Uh, yeah. Speaking of scholars, Mr. President, uh, <coughs> you and Dr. Wiesner have been putting heavy stress on the need for more scientists in this country. Yes, that's right. They're just releasing their report and the shortage of engineers. Uh, I wonder what your reaction uh, is to a program in some of the uh, New York City schools where uh, scientists from uh, private industry, I believe that uh, General Sarnoff's uh, suggestion, are going into classrooms giving lectures and uh, demonstrations with the uh, object of encouraging scientific careers? I think it would be useful because I think motivation is one of the problems. In addition, lack of funds is the uh, uh, problem to which the committee just addressed itself to. We're going to have a big shortage of uh, engineers, mathematicians, scientists. Uh, a good many of these uh, men who would have the potential cannot afford the doctorate studies. It will require an investment by the federal government, but the kind of program which uh, provides motivation that you've talked about would be very useful. President, yes. President three weeks ago, um, six distinguished Negro leaders convened a conference on foreign policy in the Negro community at Arden House. They passed a number of resolutions, and they also uh, passed a resolution to uh, confer with you. Uh, have you received the resolutions? Uh, if so, have you ever any comment? Number two, uh, do you tend to meet with the six Negro leaders? Yes, I'm supposed to meet with uh, them. I'm not familiar with all the resolutions. I remember one of them with regard to the question of ambassadors in the uh, Foreign Service uh, uh, and a good many other places, and I am meeting with them. Mr. President? Yes, President. Mr. Allen? Uh, can you tell us what's being done to uh, curb Western and other shipping to Cuba? The uh, measures that are being taken, of any, curbing shipping by Western... Uh, uh, nations and uh, others, uh, unaligned countries, is shipping in material to uh, Cuba. There's a great deal of shipping in route there now, according to information we get. Yes, uh, as you know, the uh, ship, uh, shipping any uh, kind of goods of the, the kind that uh, uses offensive weapons, of course, uh, action would be taken by the United States. Regular shipping, uh, the United States has uh, attempted to uh, use its uh, 
influence with members of NATO and others to discourage uh, shipping. Some countries have responded, and the United States is uh, preparing uh, other regulations which will affect shipping, which uh, should be uh, available within the next uh, two weeks. Yeah. Uh, after your, <coughs> your trip to Los Alamos Laboratory in New Mexico, uh, it is, is it your intention to ask for more money to speed up Project Rover or for nuclear propulsion in space? We're going to uh, let these tests go on of the reactor. These tests should be completed uh, by July. If they are successful, then we will uh, uh, put more money into the program, which would involve the uh, Nerva and uh, Rift, both the engine and the regular machine. We will wait till July, however, to see if these uh, tests are successful. It should be understood that the nuclear rocket, even under the most favorable circumstances, would not uh, play a role in any first lunar landing. This will not come into play until uh, 1970 or 71, would be useful for further trips to the moon or trips to Mars. But we have a good many areas competing for our available space dollars, and we have to try to channel it into those programs which will bring us a result first on our moon landing and then to consider Mars. I wonder if you could bring us up to date on what is being done to get the prisoners out of Cuba and whether you think it's in the national interest uh, to give food and medicine to Cuba to get these men back. Well, this is being done by the private committee of uh, the... Uh, is, do, do you favor that, sir? Uh, it's being handled by a private uh, committee composed of the families of the uh, prisoners and a committee of which General Lucius Clay and others are members, and uh, I'm very sympathetic to their efforts. Yes. Uh, you stated, sir, that you were going ahead with your and present your tax program uh, to the Congress. Two questions about that program in view of Mr. Mill's statements and uh, uh, the talk that has been about tax reduction. Do you still plan in your program to ask for a reduction that would be retroactive <coughs> to January the 1st, 1963? And will this program be in two parts, a, a program of... of uh, quick tax reduction and a program of long-term reform. Right? I think it would be better to uh, wait till uh, the first of the year before we get the precise details, but there would be in our proposal tax cuts involving 1963. Mr. Mr. President, President. Yes. it was just a year ago that you ought to have stepped up aid to Vietnam. There seems to be a good deal of discouragement about the progress. Can you give us your assessment? No, we are putting in a major effort in Vietnam. As you know, we have, uh, have about 10 or 11 times as many men there as we had a year ago. They are, uh, we've had a number of casualties. We put in an awful lot of equipment. We're going ahead with the strategic Hamlet proposal. In some phases, the military program has been uh, quite successful. There is great difficulty, however, in fighting a guerrilla war. You need 10 to 1 or 11 to 1, especially in terrain as difficult as South Vietnam. But I'm, uh, so we're not, uh, we don't see the end of the tunnel, but uh, I must say I don't think it's uh, darker than it was a year ago, in some ways lighter. Yes. Could you define for us the term offensive weapons in the context of the Cuban situation? And are you satisfied that such weapons no longer are in Cuba? I would uh, refer you back to the exchange of letters between Mr. Khrushchev and myself for our definition of offensive weapons. On the second part of your question, uh, it is our best judgment that the missiles have been uh, removed uh, from Cuba and uh, the uh, planes. The, now, it's not, uh, these things are never uh, 100%. And it is for that reason that we are insisting on uh, verification, or if we can't get the kind of international inspection, we will continue to use our own method of uh, verification, which uh, we believe gives us uh, assurance against a reintroduction of uh, these weapons into uh, Cuba. They're really, uh, and I think that uh, the methods we are using to determine uh, the status of military activity in Cuba are very effective and are being uh, used uh, frequently. I think we have the President of Chile. We're very glad to welcome him here on his first visit to the United States. And uh, he told me he had a press conference yesterday and that the press in America were far gentler than they were in, uh, in Chile. <laughs> we don't want to give him the wrong impression, so I'll call him Mr. Chalmers Roberts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. President, the administration uh, proposed in Geneva today some sort of direct communication between the White House and the Kremlin, namely either a telephone or teletype. Could you tell us what was in your mind in proposing this and how it related to the Cuban affair, if in fact it did? Or there was a delay, as you know, in the communications back and forth in the uh, Cuban affair. In uh, some degree, uh, I think that on one or two occasions, uh, it was necessary to rely on open broadcasts of messages uh, rather than sending them through the uh, coding procedure, which took a number of hours. What was happening was that when we finally concluded our day and gave, sent the message to the Soviets, they were just waking up. And uh, when they finished their day and prepared their messages for us, we were just uh, waking up. So that it was uh, taking time, coding procedures were slow, in nuclear age, uh, speed is uh, very desirable. So we are hoping that out of this present conversation we can get instantaneous communication, or at least relatively instantaneous communication. When you were speaking, sir, of uh, teletype or telephone, you once told us you didn't think the telephone was uh, very useful. I think that that's uh, probably true. I'm not convinced that uh, telephoning uh, would have uh, speeded a conversation on the telephone between Mr. Khrushchev and myself would have speeded a solution of the Cuban crisis. Uh, teletype, I think, might have made it uh, a safer situation. <laughs> but it might, the phone might be the solution, but uh, teletype certainly seems to have some advantages, yes. The Khrushchev speech today is considered a major policy declaration. It seems to be moderate in tone. I was wondering if you found any encouragement in that tone. Now, as I say, I've only had a general description, and it seemed to be directed really more to the members of the block, but uh, I haven't really concluded an analysis of it. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Brazil has not uh, fully uh, carried out the uh, anti-inflation measures, uh, which she pledged herself to carry out last year when she got large new loans and a rescheduling of old loans. And now she is in very uh, deep uh, economic trouble. What effect do you think this has upon the other nations in Latin America who are trying to meet the demands of the Alliance for Progress program? And what a possible effect upon members of Congress in their attitude towards uh, aid and the uh, Alliance? Well, I think that the situation is most painful to the Brazilians themselves with an inflation of 50 percent, which is almost unprecedented uh, over any period of time uh, without uh, causing the most uh, severe dislocations. 50 percent inflation increased the cost of living within a year. So that I think the, uh, this is a matter which the Brazilians must uh, uh, deal with. Uh, there's nothing really that the United States can do that can uh, possibly uh, benefit the people of Brazil if you have a situation which is so uh, unstable as uh, the fiscal or monetary situation within Brazil. So this is a concern to the government. I'm, it must be, and it's certainly of concern to us. I understand that the finance minister of Brazil will be coming to Washington in January. Our ambassador to Brazil has just been back for consultations, which we discussed this matter with them. And I think that the Brazilian uh, government is aware of the strong concern that we have for this inflation, which eats up our aid and which, of course, contributes to a flight of capital and therefore diminishes rather than increases the stability of the state. President, yes. it's been a long time since a president and his family have been subjected such to, to such a heavy barrage of teasing and fun poking and satire. I mean, there have been books on backstairs at the White House and cartoon books with clever sayings and uh, uh, photo albums with uh, balloons and the, and the rest, and now a uh, smash hit record. Can you tell us uh, whether you read and listen to these things and whether they produce annoyment or enjoyment? <laughs> <laughs> annoyment. Uh, no, they produce, uh, I, yes, I have read them and listened to them. Actually, I listened to Mr. Meader's record, but I thought it sounded more like Teddy than it did me, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he's annoyed. We understand, the, uh, we understand there'll be a communique uh, concerning your discussions with President Chile, but uh, meanwhile, we were wondering if these discussions, in your judgment, have accelerated or will accelerate the Alliance for Progress in that country and in Latin America generally. I think they definitely will accelerate it. President, President, Mr. President, Mr. President. Uh, this also has to do with the Alliance for Progress. Uh, aside from the good intentions expressed by various governments in Latin America, 
uh, how much real advance has been made in, in the area of economic, social, and political reform? And number two, is there any procedure by which those reforms can be evaluated here or in the OAS? Uh, well, as you know, there is a procedure under the Alliance for Progress, the so-called wise men, uh, who uh, have been uh, analyzing and approving the various uh, steps that we take under the Alliance for Progress without attempting to be in any way uh, exclusive. I know that uh, uh, a good many reforms have been made in uh, Venezuela, Colombia. In fact, uh, the, uh, uh, in Chile, we have been discussing, and the President has described, some of the agrarian and tax reforms that uh, Chile is now undertaking which give us a greater promise for the future. So that I think that uh, even though, as I said in my toast yesterday, the problems of Latin America are staggering, the lack of resources and the overdependence on one or two commodities, these governments in many cases are making a very determined effort under staggering difficulties. We had a visit from the president of Honduras the other day, 56% of the people of Honduras illiterate. These are terribly difficult problems. So that uh, I don't think we should get uh, we should be impatient with failure, but uh, we should not uh, desist because we've not uh, solved all the problems overnight. In the case of Chile, as I'm sure the President has pointed out, they depend, as many other Latin American countries do, on one or two commodities for their foreign exchange. Uh, the price of these commodities, in the case of nearly every country of Latin America, have dropped the last three or four years. The price of the raw material exports of Colombia, as I pointed out in another press conference, have dropped more than our aid has given them. Uh, Brazil depended on coffee, and coffee has dropped, uh, though we hope the coffee agreement will make some difference, so that I am disturbed, but uh, I think we ought to realize that we're dealing with the most staggering problems. Uh, yes? Uh, I follow up on that, sir. <coughs> Recently, the, the OAS sent out down a task force to Latin America, and they came up with a report that there wasn't any type of, there wasn't sufficient participation by labor and other groups of that sort in the uh, planning areas of the various governments. And that seemed to be uh, an objective of, of the uh, Alliance for Progress. Is there any way by which that could, uh, process could be speeded up? I think the strengthening of the labor movement would be uh, really one of the most desirable things we can do. Otherwise, the labor movement is going to be disaffected and go to the radical uh, left. Uh, but, so that uh, this is a problem that Moscoso was dealing with all the time, and I'm glad to be reminded of this particular point. Yes. Sir, I wonder if as a matter of policy you would tell us if you favor important government stories going to a restricted few reporters who may be specially called in for this, or if as a matter of policy you would let your, the people of your administration know that you think news should flow freely to all reporters at the same time. I think, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will. I, I, uh, I will let them know, and I think it ought to. I'm not aware that the... the privileged few. I think that uh, obviously there, some of the weekly magazines do different kinds of stories than the daily reporters, but uh, I don't think there should be a discrimination because of a size or a sex or any other reason. In some of our major cities, uh, John Birch or right-wing type groups have been, have been organizing boycotts uh, against stores uh, which carry uh, imports from Iron Curtain, so-called Iron Curtain countries, and in some cases intimidating the stores. The State Department suggests that this is contrary to our policy of encouraging uh, non-strategic trade with those countries. I wonder if you share that view about those boycotts. Yes, I don't really think that that, uh, I think it harasses uh, merchants and I don't think it really uh, carries on much of a uh, effective fight against the spread of communism. If they really want to do something about the spread of communism, they will assist the Alliance for Progress for one thing, or they will encourage their children to join the Peace Corps, or they will do a good many other things which are very greatly, they'll be generous to uh, students who come to the United States to study and show them something of America. Those are the things that really make a difference. Not going down and, because some merchant happens to have Polish ham in his shop, uh, saying he's unpatriotic doesn't seem to me to be a great contribution in the fight against communism. Mr. President, yes. there was a very specific denial from your office about the authenticity of the second article to appear in relation to what went on or what didn't go on in the Security Council. I'm referring to the Life Magazine article. But there's been a good deal of speculation uh, which has arisen as a result of the failure to uh, say whether or not the first article which created all the furor was... Uh, no, well, let me say now, the White House statement dealt with only two points in the second article. One was whether the uh, uh, White House had in any way uh, authorized or suggested uh, the article in the Saturday Evening Post, and number two, whether the White House had made uh, members of the National Security Council available. Both of those were untrue. The White House had nothing to do with the determination to write the article or with its preparation. And uh, 
the, uh, and that was what we addressed ourselves to. I will not get into a discussion of the various positions of the members of the National Security Council. Governor Stevenson has already made a reference to his position. The fact of the matter is that Governor Stevenson renders very distinguished service, as I have said. I nominated him for the presidency in 1956. I would not have appointed him, I would not have supported him for the presidency if I had uh, not believed that he would uh, be an effective and responsible president. He's done an excellent job at the United Nations. I'm surprised that anyone would possibly think that it would be in the interest of the country or the administration or the White House that any lessening of his influence would be provided. The reporters who happen to be, uh, uh, the presidency is not a very good place to uh, make new friends. I'm going to keep my old friends, but I'm responsible for many things under the Constitution, but not for what they write. That's their responsibility, and that's the way we will continue it. Mr. President, Congress has appropriated and you have approved a $10 million expenditure for the construction of an aquarium here in Washington. It has been noted that the dependent and needy children in Junior Village who are urgently in need of additional housing have not been similarly favored. Would you comment on this unusual order of priority? Well, I think that uh, one of the unfortunate things, which uh, I think the, the Congress should bear responsibility uh, in part for it, is uh, that we have inadequate expenditures for the needs of the people of this district, particularly the younger people, for our schools. Our teachers are overburdened. Recreational facilities are inadequate. And we're dealing with very uh, difficult si situation right here in the District of Columbia. Now, some people make a judgment that that's an indication that there's something wrong with the district and the way to deal with it is to just squeeze the district harder. I think the district, I don't think the Congress is appropriated sufficient funds for the interests of the district, particularly of the younger people in the district. And this is the center of the capital of a leading country of the free world, and it will be to our disgrace if we have any situation develop in the city of Washington, this rather beautiful city in some ways, uh, which is not uh, a credit to all of our people. So I think that uh, there may be need for aquarium, there may be need for a good many buildings, but there is, uh, in my opinion, uh, the uh, resource of the uh, youth here uh, should be uh, more adequately developed. Thank, Mr. You, Thank you.